Hello, welcome everyone in another episode of Now This War. Today we continue the mini series about Stereo White. The things are about to get interesting as I show you a number of techniques, how do they work and why some of them don't quite work at all. First of all, let's define some measure for Stereo White. What does it mean to be white and how much stereo white is too much? Well, the standard measure for this purpose is called correlation. It's found in many plugins and other software. So here I am with OZO 9 in major, and it has this tiny part, the vector scope. So basically, how does correlation work? At plus one, this meter shows that the Left and right channel are identical, and it's basically mono. In the middle, well, it's the middle ground, and at the zero, it means that the channels are completely independent, so the wave is maximal. And now, at negative correlation, it means that both channels are in opposite polarity, so they are going to cancel each other in phase. Let's hear that in practice. Here is some super solid from Serum. And the correlation is somewhere in the middle ground. It's not too wide, actually. Maybe I should reset that. It's actually pretty thin. All right, but now another example. This morning, I tried a plugin, Tape Choir. It's a free choir for contact from Sony Catcher. And I found that it's pretty wide. In fact, let's play something. As you can see, the correlation here is negative. And if we put that in mono, it suddenly became much quieter. Just watch the meter. The difference is significant. Quite opposite is the case of our Super Soul. If I put it in mono, it's fine. We are not losing much at all. It's of course mono, but the volume is still fine. So that's the difference, and that is what correlation meters show us. All right, let's dive into some practical cases. I took this nice blade theme, which everyone should know, and you may imagine how it's supposed to sound originally. This one is actually a preset for Serum, so can go and try it out anytime. And the first technique I would like to examine is popular Hass effect. So Hassel effect is when you take an audio, take a left and right channel and delay one channel, making things wider. Let's try it. Now delay on the channel right is larger. So yes, it became wider, but just look at this weird pattern on correlation meter. This is clearly an artificial situation. Well, the problem with Hass effect is, well, the way of its working. In principle, it just delay a part of a signal by a fixed time and that's exactly the same principle found in the comb filter so if we try to play that again but now collapse the signal to mono it sounds like shit it's basically a comb filter 
and to prove it even cleaner, I actually picked this comp filter. Made myself for Max for Life. And tuned to same frequency, and it looks and sounds just the same. So the Hass effect is unfortunately not mono compatible. If you try it with mono, you will only hurt yourself. So that's a bad idea to use Hass effect for any widening purposes. The problem with Hass effect is that it creates this kind of fixed frequency pattern. Our brain is able to easily pick it and identify it as some kind of weird anomaly that doesn't sound natural. There is a way around that, however, if we just add the modulation to delay time, we are basically getting phaser or flanger. These are similar things depending on definition. Either way, let's try it out. This is has effect. And this is simple phaser. Actually, it's phases from mm, native instruments. So it still has this distinct character, but at least now it's not so irritating as the sound changes over time. We are still in mono, however. This is all mono phaser. But at least we are one step closer to create something actual listenable. Alright, so how do we change our mono sound into stereo? Well, let's just try stereo phaser. This one. This one is a freebie phaser from Adam Chabot. And I often pretty much only use default preset for it, just awesome. Now, if we apply different delay or different filtering to left or right channel, we are finally arriving at stereo signal. Check the correlation meter here. It's still pretty narrow, but eventually it's stereo. Now, if we are at stereo, we can try another very important technique, mid-side processing. What is all about? Well, the idea is to separate the signal into mid-component and side-component. Mid-component is what is common for both left and right channel, the same for them. And the side-component is a difference between these channels, what is different in left and right channel. So we can manipulate these two components separately. Thanks to this nice Ableton rack, made myself, links below, I can now manipulate the mid and side component independently. By adjusting just gain, I can make the sound narrower and wider. And what is important, it doesn't really change the character of the sound since we only manipulate gain and boost or cut what is already in the signal. This is very natural and neutral technique. Let's compare the wet and dry signal. Even though we are using phaser, it's not that different and we are not losing the original quality of the sound. So this little trick is something I recommend for all the mono synths, like acid bass line or sync lead. If you are into mono synths, go and try this one. The next very important and popular effect for stereo widening is chorus. What does it do? Well, it applies some very subtle modulation to left and right channel in order to create stereo image. There are many ways to implement that, actually, but I would like to point out two general types. The linear chorus and the non-linear or the tuning chorus. So, what is linear chorus? Let's first hear original sound. 
now the linear chorus from Ableton Live. As you can see in vector scope, it's also some very simple modulation, but the sound got wider. What is interesting is um, if now we make that mono, the sound character doesn't change at all. It became a bit quieter, but the sound quality is still very natural. So, the best use for that is in case you are mixing some natural vocals, instruments, or classic signature scenes, just like this date theme. It's better not to alter its character too much. Alright, so now let's compare this. A linear chorus with non-linear chorus. I've got two of these. This is Talcor's LX, another freebie known for its great quality, and a super spread, also a freebie, which basically changes any incoming signal into a super so. I tune these two into similar settings, even though they may be not internally the same, but they follow similar principles. Also, note that if now I collapse this sound to mono, it does change a bit, it's not neutral, but it's not terrible either. This kind of chorus is very effective for digital synths. Let's try this loom patch, air loom. First of all, with linear chorus or without chorus at all. The sound is very thin, harsh, and overall not that pleasant. This needs some detune or unison, and Tal Chorus delivers or super spread. Once again, this is very effective if you actually need to make the sound thicker, and it's pretty thin on input. So generally for synths, I prefer detuning courses like this two. They are free, so just go and pick them. Alright, so we've seen a number of techniques to artificially widen the sound when it's mono, but how to actually fit that all in a mix? Well, let's try this Super Soul plug from Dune 2. Well, it's Dune 3, but actually Dune 2 preset. And as we can see in the correlation meter, the correlation already goes below zero. So it must be already very wide, right? Well, you would be wrong. Here is where multiband processing comes in. As I mentioned in a previous video, the low end needs to be always in mono. So let's try this at around 300 Hz. Let's make that part this is actually pretty wide. Let's make it mono. Now. And now, as I was uh, just up to 1600 is the low mid range. This one should be a bit narrower, but not too much. It's super solid after all. Now the upper meets when the action happens. Well, let's find it by R. Where is the melody and where is the noise? Let's say this is that. 
And it's already very wide, touching zero, but not crossing it, so it won't collapse in mono. And the high end. Not much happening here, it's just a uh, click or transient. And we don't want this to be very wide either, so it doesn't disappear in mono. All right, let's compare it. The difference is pretty subtle, but the meter state changes significantly. It was below zero. So, while you may not easily pick it by error on its own, if you try to fit that in actual mix with many instruments, with bass and drums, this will make a day and night difference. Well, all the values I presented here are just a rule of a thumb that I use, that may not be universal, but I would like to give you just some starting points so you can know where to go and where to start and then just tweak it by error. For sure, the element needs to be mono. And the relation is that the high mids are the widest. So go and try it. Okay, so that was it about creating and manipulating straw wide that is already there. But. Actually, the most effective way to achieve great stereo white is to start with white material at the input. That's, however, a topic for another episode. Hit like and subscribe to not miss it.